So this is a little uh, trick that I learned with um, sparse point cloud data. So you can see it's really hard to see. This is very sparse data. Um, and if you have data, something like this, where the data kind of forms like a plane or it's very simplistic sparse data, which that's kind of where I get this data from many times. It's not always the case, but um, you see here, uh, one thing that you can do in order to triangulate it, because sometimes if you triangulate it with the different algorithms, you'll get some mixed results here. Um, let me just run this one. Right, so you'll get some mixed results there. One thing that I do is you can come over here to 2D and and you can look at it from a direction. So 2D has planar and spherical. So if you say planar, you can say uh, from the current viewing direction. And then I will turn off all of these settings. Um, they, they might be valuable in certain instances, but for this, like I just want it to connect as many of those points together as possible. So you see here that if I do that, it'll just go ahead and connect every single point together into a surface. And then once you have this, a lot of times this is with hard probe data where you're taking a hard probe and scrubbing it across a surface. So after you do this, then you can come over to uh, polygons and then do like an offset, right? And we'll just do like 0.125. Like that. And if I undo it. There you go. This is longer range data anyway. But so that's the concept is um, using the sparse point cloud with triangulate. And a little side note, the spherical triangulation for spherical data is really cool where you can input the center and it will calculate and mesh from the middle out. Um, but in this instance with sparse data, using a triangulate um, from a planar orientation helps out a lot and again turning off all of the noise reduction and things like that will help connect it together and make usable information so this is just a little point cloud sparse data uh, tip